Our next speaker is Deborah Kilpatrick. Um, she is the Chief Executive Officer of Adation Health. She was formerly Chief Commercial Officer of Cardio DX and held multiple um, leadership roles at Guidant. Um, perhaps the most interesting role she held was actually um, of a peach farmer early in her career. Um, and she actually is an amazing football fan as well as an amazing person who is really leading an in 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 incredibly innovative company thinking about how do you redesign, redesign clinical trials and really involve consumers. Deb? Thanks, Dr. Desai, and thanks to Stanford Medicine for having us here. Um, I think the first question we should ask is, is Under Armour going to give us all one of those stretchy things uh, to wear uh, when, we, when we work out? Um, I'm going to need to work out a little bit more before I do that. Um, so I'm going to talk about what we do at Evidation in the space of uh, sort of redefining what we feel is the appropriate way to look at real world evidence in the 21st century of medicine, which is real life evidence. Um, I usually start by pointing out that to do what we do, um, we really start with bringing together sort of best in class uh, consumer technology folks and experts that in most of my career I never intersected with, um, and really best in class uh, experts in all aspects of healthcare, whether it's medical devices, biotech, diagnostics, uh, pharmaceuticals, et cetera, and try to bring investors around the table that have a unique appreciation for those sectors. Um, even now in Silicon Valley, um, which is where we're located, um, it can be very tough to bring together these two sectors of expertise and, and, and ideas um, because many of the things that make the tech sector so fast and efficient um, don't exactly exist in healthcare for good reason, frankly, right? Um, because uh, as a patient, we want things to be very paced, we want things to be very regulated, we want things to be very locked down before we move. And so a lot of what we're doing at Evidation is trying to find the best way to move quickly with integrity and redefine the way we think about health health outcomes in the digital era. I like to show this slide to sort of make this very visual representation of essentially what we're doing with data. Um, Historically in healthcare, we view the journey of patient outcomes as very episodic, right? We intersect with our primary care physician. If you're a female, you intersect with your ob um, If we are in clinical trials, we intersect with sites and site coordinators over time. But it's very episodic with essentially invisible um, experiences in between. And so in the digital era, all it's like somebody's turned the light on in the room. And instead of there being just only spotlights in the patient's life, now we've flooded the room with light. And so a lot of what we're doing at Evidation is taking all of that formerly invisible data and flipping it up to the visible. We're turning the light on in the room. And now in an era where you can essentially see all kinds of patient behavior, the question becomes what kinds of beha patient behavior are actually relevant. So the data universe as we see it uh, is depicted on this slide, which I lovingly refer to as the Easter egg slide of evidation. Um, at the left is sort of traditional, the core of what we think of in healthcare as the evidence base, which is controlled clinical trials, right? Surrounding that, particularly over the last decade, has been uh, enormous amounts of real world practice data. Uh, and by the way, an entire market of, of businesses that uh, operate on this reselling of that data. Um, the best example of this is claims, but more recently, of course, in the digital era and EHR era, we can think of uh, EHR data as being part of real world practice data, but distinctly reflecting what happens outside of the control trial setting. What are real world prescription patterns? What are real world uh, patient care patterns? What are real world standard of care uh, regardless of guidelines? What we're doing at Evidation is in the blue is looking at all of the data sources that surround and define the patient's life outside of the clinic setting, right? And we think of those categories as being um, sort of in three areas. One is uh, behavior data, uh, which is really our secret sauce, it's where we really focus and where we've chosen to put uh, the bulk of our effort. And data, behavior data for us is any data source that's in the digital life of that person outside of the clinic setting that can tell us something about what's going on in their life, the choices that they're making, the activities that they're undergoing, um, perhaps it's the side effects they're experiencing, something that tells us about the behavior 24-7 under informed consent with full transparency, by the way, to, to, to all of those data feeds. Contextual data, 
which uh, to refer to the previous speaker's comments about the holistic experience. To us, in order to make that behavior data give us a holistic picture of the patient, we really need to understand the situational context that that data was acquired in. The very easy example of this is the weather. Um, I am actually a fairly rigorously routine-driven person that goes outside every morning, rain or shine, and exercises, until I don't. And is it because I have the flu, or is it because it's raining so badly that day that I simply can't get up the courage to go outside? One is really important to my health, one is simply a choice I'm making because of the situation that I'm in. Um, Patient-reported metrics, I think that we are at the very, very bleeding edge dawn of a new era of patient-reported metrics and outcomes, um, simply because we can get them frictionlessly and we can get them anytime, anywhere. Um, for those of us who have been in healthcare for a long time, it's always been a struggle, particularly on the industry side, to have to use patient diaries as one of the modes of, of understanding the patient experience of our products, um, and even in, in or out of a clinical trial. And the simple reason is we always ask them to do that diarying, that recording or the, or, or the experience in the diary, after it happened, like in some cases weeks or months after it happened. I can barely remember what I felt like when I woke up yesterday morning, much less be able to record it next weekend in a diary. Um, so we're really redefining what it means to understand the patient journey and how behavior along that journey and the choices that we make will redefine the way we think about real life outcomes. Um, this is a graphical depiction of the platform itself. Um, at the most important layer is at the bottom, which are the connected populations. Think of in a world where, think of a time where we can connect to patients 24 seven in the real life, um, in a very frictionless way, just as frictionlessly as I use Google Maps to drive home in my car. Um, it has redefined the way that I think about my commute. And I think this connectivity will redefine the, we th the way we think about ger generating outcomes evidence. Um, this middle layer, the data types, um, medical behavior and contextual, um, and the top sits this real life study platform where we can essentially run um, any kind of study that's appropriate to be virtualized um, at scale. Um, for us, this is what that looks like. Um, the patients themselves that are participating in the kinds of studies we do at Evidation can be anywhere. Um, a typical study for us will enroll in all 50 states. Um, this is a, a footprint of, someone asked me recently, are these sites? No, these are people. Um, but you can think of, in, this, in the way that I'm describing this, in this construct, that the people themselves could be a site, in the way that we've thought historically about sites. Um, this is the footprint of two st studies we recently ran, randomized prospective pivotals in uh, cardiometabolic disease. One was in uncontrolled hypertension, and one was in type 2 diabetes. Um, if I pull up any study that we do, whether there's 100 people in it or there's 100,000 people in it, the footprint is probably going to look something like this, um, simply because when you're not constrained by brick and mortar walls, um, why would you be? Right? You're going to try and get as broad a participation from the general public or fitting your inclusion criteria as you possibly can. And this allows us to redefine what we think about um, as, in terms of showing product impact for the industry per side of this and showing patient outcomes for the healthcare part of this. There's three core capabilities that we've developed to be able to do this and do this well. Um, one is enabling these populations to participate anytime, anywhere literally anytime, anywhere. We challenge ourselves with that every day. Um, two, quantifying health outcomes that allow us to account for real life behavior outside brick and mortar walls in the real life of the patient. And three, being able to execute multi-channel uh, data aggregation uh, and analytics machine learning at scale. That means being able to do studies of hundreds of thousands of people in a virtual randomized pivotal as easily as you do a study of 10. When you do that, that gives you a way of looking completely differently at the way to answer the same questions we've been asking in healthcare for a long time. And so on the left-hand side of the slide, I'm showing you, you know, some things that can now be quantified very differently. One, characterize the quality of life impact of products very differently. Same questions apply, very different ways of getting the answer. Two, use digital biomarkers, not just biological biomarkers, to identify very relevant clinical events. Three, segment population benefit and identify super responders. Just like there can be biological super responders, we believe there are behavioral super responders. And by using digital biomarkers to phenotype different segments of population or patient cohorts, you can identify those that are most likely to respond. And when we think about the future of precision health, it's gonna be about behavior and biology. Um, the use cases here, just to close, uh, that this allows you to participate in. Um, one, you can quantify links between behavior patterns and for example, flare patterns in autoimmune diseases.
Now imagine if uh, we've got a new therapeutic that wants to, uh, or that should be given at a different dosing regime than that patient is using, used to using in their, in their normal management of RA. Um, that's gonna be a pretty profound, important thing to understand potentially, right? Are there behaviors around the routine patterns of that patient that may make them more or less conducive to adhering to those new dosing patterns, right? That's gonna directly affect the outcome on the new therapeutic. Um, another kind of use case. Imagine your ability to real time optimize digital interventions uh, to get the effect you want in vaccination patterns at scale in infectious disease. We just did a study uh, that was funded by DARPA in the last flu season, meaning the 2016-2017 flu season, that involved 77,000 people. And it allowed us to, what we did is we designed a, a digital intervention that had a very sort of simple but complex objective, which is can you actually move the needle on vaccination rate by a simple, almost free intervention that's based on smart, very targeted text messaging at very specific times or, or moments of influence in the patient's life. That data is in review. We're very excited about what we were able to show. Um, finally, identifying super responders to very complex uh, therapies in the form of digital, right? Um, but simply identifying them in chronic diseases that have become very commonplace. A lot of what Nancy talked about um, from the AHA um, is about what's causing that, that curve, what's causing that curve to go up, back up. I spent the bulk of my early career at Guidant Corporation in the Vascular Intervention Division here in Santa Clara, uh, working in cardiovascular disease uh, from the standpoint of implantables and combination products. And I remember we were very, very excited that <laughs> those curves were actually both going down in men and women, and then all of a sudden, uh, now she's showing us um, those curves are going back up again. I would suspect that this gives us a unique opportunity in the digital era of medicine to find new ways of identifying super responders to digital therapeutics um, to focus on chronic cardiometabolic diseases in a whole new way that will allow us to start bending that curve back down. And so at Evidation, that's the kind of work we're focused on. Um, I look forward to the panel participation and panel discussion, and I look forward to your questions.